Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSGO News. It's been a long time since I've seen all of you guys on an episode, and I do apologize for that. I let you all know if you saw last video that this week and last week have been midterm week, so very, very busy week this week, but after this week, I should have a lot more time for CSGO News episodes. So thank you for all of you guys who've been watching the videos and sticking around in the comment section down below. Please make sure to leave a comment on today's video, and I'll try my best to reply to that, guys. But also on top of that, for our first big story of today's episode of CSGO News, we have a huge announcement for our next CSGO major, which kind of leads into a whole other topic besides itself, and it will be E-League officially hosted that it was heavily suspected after a while ago they posted a giveaway where they were giving away tickets to the next major after that it was heavily suspected that e-league would be our next major host and many of you guys are aware of this e-league season one season two they've also already had another major and season three is on its way their production quality has been probably of all american quality so far has been top notch and again we can probably see this trend going towards in the future if we're going to stick to only two majors every single year it's been heavily swapped back and forth between america then european then american then european obviously our last one was going to be pgl before that was Atlanta. So it seems a trend as of right now for CSGO majors is every other one will be an American hosted major and then every other one besides that will actually be somewhere else over in the European nations or wherever whoever else wants to host a major. So E-League did land that spot guys. It will be in Boston, Massachusetts and hopefully going to be a great event sometime in January and I cannot wait to make another sticker investment video so hopefully all of us can make money together off that next major. But this does bring up a bigger issue out there. Many of you guys have probably heard about this as of right now is the lead time of these major announcements because it's a bidding process and Valve does not want to announce this ahead of time. Time. Of course, we've had several submissions from hosts out there like PGL, like E-League, MLG, other, other tournament organizers out there that want to obviously land these spots like ESL as well. Of course, that bidding process comes to a leeway though. With that no lead time for these teams like Ty Lu or Optic Gaming, it has a huge backfire when it comes to their announcements because it leaves teams like Ty Lu with, with 24 hours to decide between tournaments like Epicenter or open qualifiers for the major. Even Optic Gaming will be affected. They have to withdraw from some tournaments. Who knows what those tournaments might be as of right now, but several teams are affected by this and I want to bring up the point and I'm sure you guys saw this post a long time ago as well. We had the Dota 2 announcement. They actually announced all of their majors, all 11 majors throughout 2017 and throughout the end of 2018, giving teams leeway and lead time to actually choose which tournaments, which qualifiers, and also giving other organizers out there time to actually reschedule their events. So as of right now, we have the Open Asian or Region or Chinese qualifiers and so a lot of teams there had to drop other tournaments to go and do those because of course, if you have a chance at a million dollar tournament, as posted by this tweet, very, very very well put. If you have a chance at a million dollar tournament or a half a million dollar tournament, which one are you going to take? But here's the sacrifice they make. If you're going to go to Epicenter, you probably have a better chance of winning than you do for qualifying for the major. But if you have that shot at the million dollars, of course you're going to have you're going to have to try as an organization to achieve that. So a lot of teams out there are sacrificing a lot because Valve. Now I don't want to say incompetency, but that kind of again, once again, I want to go back to this: their laziness to not actually change their way. You know, we've had in, in the past, of course, many things they have done wrong and just consistently not change because they, they figure they figure their game is good enough as it is. And so a lot of players are now striving for this. We want our majors announced ahead of time. And I think what's really the problem here? What would be the pain? What would actually hurt us about announcing majors ahead of time? What do you guys think about that? But on to our next story as well. Even bigger, apparently now Mountain Dew League updates. I'll give you guys the standings right now. We do have Team GX. Many of you guys are aware on that team. We of course have Swag, Dazed, AZK, Polo, and Dapper. A great team looking so far in Mountain Dew League. Mountain Dew League has been a rare tournament. As of last year and before that, Mountain Dew League was not fun to watch at all. Now we have Days and his team actually streaming Mountain Dew League every every few days now. Uh, actually, I think it's every four to five days. Their, their matchups are, are about once a week. And it's actually very fun to watch. Days usually breaks seven to 10,000 uh, watchers during that. And it's been very, very enticing to watch these guys play together on, I guess you could call lower tier teams, but they've been performing very well as well. Several close games where they played against Rise Nation in their last game. As of right now, they're undefeated. They gave Rise a brutal beatdown after apparently as well we had the Rise Nation coach stream sniping days. I'll show you guys this clip really quickly here as well. We've had so many stream snipers in the past, but people still continue to do it and they still continue to get caught. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but stream sniping, I swear, I, I post I posted this a long time ago for the last time we had stream snipers. Apparently people stream sniping, uh, I think it was Mo TV against them. I said eventually you're going to get caught no matter what you do, and this kind of just proves that point. But even more importantly, the big story today I want to talk to you guys about. We have big announcements for for the Finnish military service. And again, I really kind of want to talk about this because I'm sure many of you guys are from European countries. A lot of European countries, or only a few, I guess, actually require military service out of teenagers nowadays. I think I think a majority of them no longer require this, but countries like Switzerland and Finland, as of right now, do require military service. But a big announcement a couple of days ago as yes, the Finnish army has now announced an athlete service for esports athletes. Now what this means is increased holiday time as well as some more free time on the job during their military service to actually keep practicing and keep good at what they're doing 
between and this is actually a big announcement for any Finnish pro out there there's a lot of young Finnish pros out there as of right now the one that's up and coming right now is actually Sergej on screen he's 15 years old he just joined FPL and eventually of course we'll have to go into military service and so they now announced this new athlete service so congrats to that and this actually really touches home because one of the guys I actually met uh, through CSGO we, on screen for all of you we call him Papa Joe he is actually from Switzerland and he actually had to do military service himself and he is of course not an esports athlete but it's really cool to kind of cool to see this does apply to people who actually watch my videos friends I met through CSGO who actually have to go through military service if they go pro can actually now apply for this athlete service and take time off to actually practice their their at their profession so it's really cool to see the Finnish army is now applying that to that and uh, thanks to Papa Joe or uh, my friend Joe actually met through CSGO for allowing me to show those pictures military service over there looks insane if you guys are wondering here in America we are not forced to actually do military service we join the reserves just in case there is a, a World War three or the world goes to goes to crap really quick but we're not we're never forced to do that so um, you know thanks to you guys for doing your service for your countries and I'm gonna end today's video with some speculation I want you guys to comment down below what you thought about this the first one is a quick point I want to talk about we now have cloud nine two owing optic for the second time in the past two days this time it was actually the North American uh, close qualify for epicenter the losers finals they then previously had actually beat them before that as well 2-0 sweep so cloud nine looking very good I, I'm not sure this is actually a case of cloud nine looking very good or optic looking very poor I think optic is still a very solid roster and as of right now what we're seeing throughout ESL Pro League again online matches we have several teams out there who are definitely not consistent not strong and I'm gonna stick by my point guys optic has a great chance to prove some great points here guys and actually win some matches against some teams that are very very much struggling the one the one team that actually comes to mind right now is Fnatic and NIP is actually struggling LDLC is pulling a lot of upsets there's so many teams out there right now besides FaZe Clan that are really not being consistent so I think right now is the time to strike and right now the rankings are no longer solidified I think it's for sure that FaZe Clan is number one in the nation or number one in the world right now but besides that everyone below them Navi Fnatic is really struggling as well uh, we're gonna have to see uh, what other changes happen before the major qualifiers do start so just like last year uh, six months ago where we had the major qualifiers beginning this is when all the roster change rumors did start so it seems once again the cycle is restarting itself and we could have more roster changes coming soon now on top of that to end that uh, the previous number one team in the world guys SK Gaming lost a match last night that I want to say looked kind of sketchy now you guys can take this whatever you want you can say Illuminati Jake or because I'm conspiracy theorist but I do want to po quickly point out we had last week of course Ghost Gaming playing against several teams like Tempo Storm and, and it's having some some very suspicious moves uh, and again many of the actual Brazilian players out there including Fur on SK Gaming actually accusing Ghost Gaming of cheating and then this week in ESL Pro League Ghost Gaming come out and stomp SK I think it was 16 to 3 or 16 to 4 then they actually got stomped themselves 16 to 3 or 16 to 4 but very suspicious loss there by SK Gaming people thinking they might have thrown that match because the odds were so so high I don't think they threw the match guys just very sketchy though that you call out a team for cheating one week and the next week they dominate you and it's a ghost gaming team that is not even close to SK Gaming's level. They should never be taking a map off SK. But it was kind of weird. What do you guys think about that? Anyway, hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSK News. I will see you guys all tomorrow in a couple days of more news. All right, I'm going to go. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, I like you. Goodbye.